This is the first video of the animated course, where we will learn how to create an animation tool, like Madam from scratch. Today we are going to create the simplest library that can be made using PyCaro and FFmpeg. Clone the v01 branch from this repository and follow the installation steps. Don't forget to create the videos folder, otherwise you will get errors. I will install these other two dependencies for me of them. Move to the examples folder and open the raw image file. If you have no knowledge of PyCaro, you can go to the links you see on the screen to see more information. This is a very simple PyCaro script that generates a 2x2 pixel PNG file. I am drawing a pixel-sized square in the upper left corner, in a red color. The part we care about is line 16. We see that I am printing something by console, and then I save the image in a PNG file. When executing the file, we see an array of hexadecimal values. Very simply speaking, each group of four hexadecimal values represents one pixel. We can check this by opening the PNG file. What we would expect is something like this, but it doesn't look like this. The reason for this is due to resampling, which basically indicates the way images change when resized. We will study this later, but for now it is not necessary. If you want to get the expected result, then use the code you see on the screen. Something important to note is that the order of the colors, that is, red, green, and blue are inverted, they go from right to left, since the fourth value is the opacity. We can check this by adding another pixel at the top right. If we are correct, then the values should be in this order. Indeed, this is how they appear in the data. The reason why this happens, according to Madam itself, is that this is how Cairo Surface works. Now that we have understood this, let's explain the purpose of our library. As we saw in the first chapter of Madam's professional course, the way videos are rendered is by creating each frame of the animation and passing that information to FFmpeg. We can do this in many ways. We could render each frame to PNG and then concatenate each image into a video. And in fact, there are already people who have done this. The library we are building is based on this one here. In this code, we are creating a temp file that will store a PNG file in memory and then pass it to FFmpeg. However, doing this is quite inefficient as we have to instantiate the images to PNG. Fortunately, FFmpeg also supports raw data, the data like we just saw. The million dollar question is how to do this. The answer is given to us by Manam, using a pipe. I recommend you to take a course on Python subprocesses and bash, but I'm going to give you a quick introduction. Go to the Learn Subprocess folder. We can print the contents of the input file using the cat command. If you are on Windows, please use a terminal that uses bash, such as git bash. Now, if I want to filter out words containing the sequence of letters C, O, and D, regardless of whether they are uppercase, I can use a pipeline to connect the processes. I already know that the grep command accepts files as arguments, but that's not the point. What I want is that, somehow, I can send this lines to grep with a pipe. 
To do this, I can use a subprocess as you see here. We are telling Python that the data input will be through a pipe. In lines 5, 6, 7, and 8, I am writing each line that is going to be concatenated and then, using the close method, the command is executed. I must point out that the grep command is not executed until line 9. The lines that have the right method are creating a space in memory that at the end will be used by the close method. If we run the program, we can see that it works as expected. This we are going to use with FFmpeg. I also recommend you to take some FFmpeg course or read some documentation to better understand the following commands. Go to the root folder and open the animated file. The first function is used to obtain each frame of the animation in byte format. The parameter t is the one that will control the behavior of the animations. The open file function is used to open the video automatically when the rendering is finished. And the most important function is run. Here we indicate the number of frames that the animation will have, the name of the video file, the width and height in pixels, and the FPS. These are the commands that will execute FFmpeg, which I basically copied from Manim. I don't understand much about codecs, but the most important parts are the following. This flag indicates that, if it finds an existing file, it will overwrite it. These flags indicate that the input data type will be raw and RGBA formatted. The middle dash indicates that the input values will come from a pipe. And these flags indicate the output video format. If you go to the Manum source code, you will see that we are basically doing the same thing. Obviously Manum has more features, adding audio, transparency, exporting in images, etc. But basically this is the way Manum normally works. And now, the only thing to do is to get each frame and add it to the pipeline input. To understand this, let's open the fade in rectangle file. This code here is to be able to execute files and child paths, see more information here. What we are interested in is in the function draw frame. The value of t will go from 0 to the number of total frames, we define this in the animated file. So, if I want to animate a typical fade-in with PyCaro, I only have to create an alpha value like the ones we use in Manim, like this. Don't forget to return the surface. And to render the animation, we call the run function of animated. Let's run the file. Perfect, it seems that everything works correctly. As the colors are inverted, we can use some function to solve that. We can increase the resolution and FPS here. Just remember that these values are in pixels, not in relative units as in Manum. Finally, we are going to draw a circle. The logic is basically the same, but in this case, what we are interested in is to control the arc that the circle will have in each frame of the animation. Remember that these values are in radians, like Manum.
However, now we notice a small problem. We see that the circle is not completely drawn. For people who have studied Manum's alpha updaters, this problem will seem familiar. To solve this, we simply have to add an extra frame, just like Manum does. And that's it, this is the simplest and most efficient animation library that can be built using Picaro and FFmpeg. If we added multi-threading and more fancy stuff, maybe we could make it faster, but that's up to you. I recommend you check out this other Picaro library. It already has several functionalities, such as the blur effect, but it is less efficient since it pre-renders the images before converting them to video. Your task is to optimize this code with what you learned here. The next step is to convert this code to Julia and Rust. To be able to make tutorials like this, many hours of research, preparation, and video editing are needed, in addition to the fact that the information you get from this channel cannot be found anywhere else on the internet. So, if you like this content or it has helped you in any way, remember that you can support it via PayPal or Patreon. This way, I can get more videos with higher quality and faster. Thank you very much for staying here. See you in the next video.